when you're doing your design for your Singapore electrical installation, voltage drop might be a root cause for your equipment to malfunction. Do you know there are simple voltage drop charts and calculation methodology allowing you to identify if your selected cables and installation method meets the requirement of the voltage drop criteria? Hi, my name is Ray Khan. SS638, formerly CP5, is a Singapore electrical installation standards that set the guideline for the maximum voltage drop allowed in electrical wiring. In today's session, you will get to learn about the key factors that affect voltage drop and how to calculate them. Voltage drop describes how the supply energy of the voltage source is reduced as the electrical current moves through the passive element in the electrical circuit. High voltage drop across the conductors, all conductors are all undesired as the supply energy is dissipated in the process, reducing the voltage drop across the load and across the active circuit elements help to improve the supply energy to the equipment allowing them to function properly. Next, we're going to talk about voltage drop. Voltage drop can be represented in millivolt per ampere and per meter. And the voltage drop can be calculated by finding the voltage difference on the conductors. Example, this can be done by adding the voltage difference between the live cable and the neutral cable. For instance, a single phase load connected to a pair of live and neutral cable, the resistive voltage drop on the length per meter can be calculated by summing up the voltage drop in the live conductors as well as the neutral conductors. Therefore, the formula for voltage drop is equal to voltage drop on the live cable plus the voltage drop on the neutral cable. As stated in Singapore Standards Consumer Installation, voltage drop between the origin of installation to the socket outlet of the terminals of the equipment shall not exceed 4% of the nominal voltage. This means that if you are using a single phase voltage supply, for instance a 230 volt, the voltage between the origin of the installation and the socket outlet does not exceed a full load of 4% of 230 volt, which equates to 9.2 volts. Voltage drop is simply a term referring to a definition of voltage loss that occurs through the circuit due to impedance. Once the voltage drop exceeds a full load of 4% or more, it will very likely affect the operation of the equipment. Voltage drop can be expressed in percentage. Percentage value of the voltage drop equals to Vs minus Vr divided by Vs multiplied by 100%. The advantage of expressing voltage drop in percentage is that they can be added together directly. Vs, descending end voltage, can be a nominal value of the supply voltage. Vr equals to the voltage receiving end. Here is a classical example of a single line diagram for voltage drop parameters affected by both cable and bus bars. Vs is descending end voltage, which can be a nominal value of the supply voltage. Vr is the voltage receiving end. Now let's take for instance we have a 5% voltage drop from the main switch board and another 2% of voltage drop from the bus bar outgoing to the consumer load. This will give a total of 7% which have already exceeded the maximum permissible voltage drop where our permissible voltage drop is not to go above 4% at the load. Knowing your voltage drop value at the design phase gives you ample time to readjust your cable selection and installation. The first factors that affect voltage drop is your selection of cables. The rated voltage of a cable is reference to how the cable is designed. The two key deciding factors on how cables are selected are the number of calls within the cable and also the cross-sectional area. For example, a multi-call PVC insulated shielded cable 
In the illustration, the more conductors you have, the more current is able to flow. In the next illustration, it shows a cross-sectional area. Let's take for instance a single core PVC insulated shielded cable. A single core conductor with a very large cross-sectional area enables more currents to flow. That is why during a design phase, it is important to consider if the intended load is meant for a single phase circuit or a three phase circuit. The insulation of the cable has a temperature limit as well. If the cable experiences high current, the heat generated will melt the insulation and this can lead to shorting among the copper core. The second factor that affects voltage drop is the method of cable installation. The method of installation of cable affects the current carrying capacity. The key reason is because of ambient temperature. And this means the method of installation. With the example of a cable housed in a trunking, how the cable are grouped together, and the type of thermal insulation material being used plays a significant factor in affecting the overall temperature. If there's a rise in temperature surrounding the cable, this will affect the correction factor. Next, we're going to do a case study on calculating the voltage drop using an illustration of a typical three-phase circuit for 1200 volt supplying a three-phase balance load of 164 kilowatt with a power factor of 0.8 lagging. The circuit is installed using a perforated cable tray with a cables of 4 by 150 mm squared. The length of the cable is 80 meters. So the question is, what is the voltage drop value? First, we go to table 4A and identify based on the cable installation method. Using the perforated cable tray, and this will bring us to the selection of method 11. Now we go to table 4E1B to estimate our voltage drop. First, we identify the number of cables. For this illustration, we're going to use a three or four cables as this is a typical three-phase circuit. For our chart earlier, we see that using the perforated cable tray brings us to installation method 11. For a cross-sectional area of 150mm squared, we have three values in place, R, X, and Z. R refers to the resistive voltage drop, X refers to inductive voltage drop and Z is the impedance voltage drop. This value can be used in the calculation model later. From here we see that R is 0.28, X is 0.165 and Z is 0.32. To calculate voltage drop, there are two key formulas. If the power factor of the load is unknown, we will use the following formulas. Voltage drop equals to Z, which is the value of the impedance voltage drop, multiplied by L, multiplied by current in the circuit, and divided by 1000 volts. If the power factor of the load is known, we will use the following. Voltage drop equals to R, which is the value of the resistive voltage drop, multiplied by cosine theta, plus X, X is the inductive reactance value, multiplied by sine theta, multiplied by L that refers to the cables in meters, multiplied by current in a circuit, divided by 1000 volt. In this illustration, first we will select the formula where power factor of load is known. Voltage drop formula will be equal to R, which is the resistive voltage drop value, multiplied by cosine theta, plus X, which is the inductive reactance value, multiplied by sine theta, multiplied by L, that refer to the cable length in meters, and IB refers to the current in the circuit, divided by 1000 volt. We put in the value from table 4E1B, 
my R will be equals to 0.28 multiplied by cos theta multiplied by X which is 0.165 multiplied by sine theta L refers to the cable in meters IB is the current in the circuit divided by 1000 volt next we will find the value of theta we know that the power factor of 0.8 and this means that the cosine theta will give us 0.8 which means if I inverse cosine 0.8 this will give me a theta value of 36.869 if I apply this value into sine of 36.869 I will get a value of 0.6 next I notice my current is not indicated but we have the power value of 164 kilowatt formula to calculate power is P equals to IV if I were to divide my 164 kilowatt by 400 volt supply using the 164 kilowatt divided by 400 will give me a 410 M. Moving next, I will put all this value into the formula. For this drop will be equals to 0.28 multiplied by cosine theta which is 0.8 plus 0.165 multiplied by sine theta which is now 0.6 multiplied by 70 meter multiplied by 410 m divided by 1000 volt. With the equation of voltage drop will be equals to 0.323 multiply by 70 meter multiply by 410 m divided by 1000 volt this will give you 9270.1 divide this by 1000 volt you will get the value of 9.2701 so this is the voltage drop value that you have calculated now how do i know whether this fulfilled the allowable for this drop so I will use 400 volt multiplied by 0.04 this will give me 16 volt so 16 volt is higher than 9.27 volt which I've calculated therefore this value of voltage drop is acceptable thank you for spending your time with me and I hope my sharing has been beneficial to you and let us make our electrical design and installation a safer environment for everyone. I do look forward to seeing you in my next video. And may peace be with you.